Welcome friends, brothers and sisters, and everyone who listens to us through different media. Today, we have a fantastic topic, one of the best topics we have discussed. Today, you will know why, from September 17th to 18th, 2024, the Lord will return for His church. The Philadelphia Church, not for the others, not for the rebels He rebukes in Revelation 2 and 3 verses 1 to 6, not for those who did all things well and forgot their concepts, that's what's written in Revelation. Today, brethren, I want to go to a graphic that appears on the screen with all these points that we will analyze later, not now. This point will be fundamental at the beginning of this video. But at the end of these points, we see on the screen, I will explain it to you individually. Please watch this video until the end because this will confirm what probably no one has ever told you in your Christian life. I am going to move on to the parable of the ten virgins in the Bible. Most of you probably know the parable of the ten virgins that is in chapter 25 of Matthew. Here, we will take out a hidden treasure. I don't think you have heard it because the Lord emphasized it to me about four times in the early morning yesterday. He says like this, then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to receive the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. The foolish took their lamps. They did not take oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels along with their lamps, and when the bridegroom was late, they all dozed and fell asleep. Note that they all fell asleep at midnight. A cry was heard. Here comes the bridegroom. Go out to meet him. Here we have a point number one. Who is the voice? Maybe you are not being warned, but there is a voice from a watchman or many watchmen. I am one of them. There is an advice alert. The bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Someone knew when the bridegroom was going to come. So all those virgins got up and arranged their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise ones, Give us your oil because our lamps are going out. But the wise ones responded by saying so that we do not lack and you go. Instead, go to those who sell the oil. As you see here, those who send them to the seller and buy for yourselves are divided. But while they were going to buy, the husband came. Those who were ready entered the wedding with him, and the door was closed. Point number two, they entered. The door was closed because they were attentive to the voice. Remember that about the warning. The other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Still, he answered and said, Honestly, I tell you, you will not know. Stay awake because you do not know the day or the hour in which the Son of Man will come. I want to go to the Greek here and see if this is correct. You are going to go with me. The Lord was talking to them. They didn't go in because the others were inside. It is a forceful phrase in the KJV and in many translations, but let's see if this is the case. That's why I have always said that he who translates interprets. I don't know why this is here, but now we will see it. Here, there is a situation in which the Lord says that later. The virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. The others were already inside, but he responded and said, Truly, I tell you that I do not know you. Stay awake, because you do not know the day and hour in which the Son of Man will come. Let's go over here. We have someone's warning right now. They are announcing that September 17th to 18th is coming, and a group says to the watchman that no one knows the day and the hour, referring to us. They stay so calm as if they were the great watchman and knew everything. But the watchman is the one who knows. In other words, they are not the watchmen. They are the ones who do not know. They are reckless people who do not know. Look, I'm going to tell you why. We will go to the Greek here, so that you who need to learn to read KJV 1960 can do so. Well, because you do not know the day or the hour the Son of Man will come. Now listen to what the Greek says, and look at the words that were translated, because here it is not that they made mistakes of using different words. They made mistakes of translating wrong tense, and this is blundering because it completely changes the entire scene and biblical interpretation. I want to add here for those who do not know, 
and are new to this channel. They did the same with the translations related to personal pronouns. They mistranslated personal pronouns. Because in the Greek language, there is only one pronoun for he, she, and it. So, they translated the best they understood then, but also, in future translations, they did not check and repeat the same error for centuries. This is not just any mistake. These mistakes are serious. Thus, in Greek, staying awake translates as watching because one does not know the day or the hour that the Son of Man is coming. Oh, that fraudulent hand that wants to make us believe things that are not in their originals, let's reread it. They are staying awake. Therefore, be vigilant because they have not known. They did not know the day or the hour that Jesus arrived. The others did know when Jesus was coming because the voice of the watchtower told them, they realized. Let's go into the words they have known. It will confirm that this is still the past, perceived, they did not perceive, they did not see the definition, which interests us. It is used here only in the past tense. They have not known who, those who were left outside, they have not known the day and time that the groom came and you realize how the Lord is opening the understanding in this last time. As we understand the mistranslation in specific personal pronouns, we now know that Shekinah is a feminine name, thanks to the original in Aramaic. But the damage has already been done since many follow the crowds, and these are the ones who will stay with their pastors who preach something that is not true because they only learned it in a Bible college, and they repeat it for generations. Please do not be lazy and seek the truth because our salvation depends on it. This is coming to light now, and those of us who speak the truth are rejected by the majority who are brainwashed by the doctrine of men and bad translations. Now we are at the end of grace, and the truth is coming to light in leaps and bounds. Thirty years ago, we did not have this technology. We have it at hand, and we do not check it. The majority continue preaching the same things the same errors to make people wrong. Because the Lord told me the Noahs are not in the pulpits, and now from here, we reach thousands and millions. In the pulpits, they do not get thousands and millions. They come carrying their fame from 30 years ago. I am not against the pastors, but you have to tell them the truth. They are preaching wrongly. They don't enter or let them enter. If they teach this thing about the day and hour, no one knows. Of course, we know because the Father knows it, and the Father reveals it to whoever He wants. So the watchmen know it, which is us, me, and many of those announcing this from September 17th to 18th, where the most extraordinary event expected by the church is going to happen, which is the rapture of the church. You can see it in Greek. Translate it yourself. Don't be fooled. Wake up. You will know the day and hour that the Lord is going to come, and He is knowing it. And if you do not listen and pay attention to your pastor, you will lose this opportunity. Rest assured that your pastor will not be in your judgment, or your rewards, or in your losses. As the Bible says, that day, the pastor will not. What I mean is that I taught you this, that's not going to help you. I'm talking to people who are interested in the man, each to their own. I am not saying that you will not be saved, but I am saying that the rapture church is not for everyone. If you have been deceived, or if it has been because the pastor from 30 years ago has been telling you the same thing, and that you do not consider yourself part of the rapture, because you don't need to expect it, you do not know the day, you are lost in time, you may stumble. Then, it was obvious that there is a big difference here in this phrase. That's why I say that these people who translated the Bible into Spanish or English, I don't know in what position they are going to be in front of the Lord. I am going to warn them because the Lord must be pretty upset by this type of translations. More than 3,000 phrases in KJV that are poorly translated and express very poorly what the Lord says. The virgins did not know when the bridegroom was coming, and they were believers. All ten were together. In Revelations 2 and 3, they were all believers. That is why I do not want you to be deceived. By going one hour to church on Sundays and on Wednesday or Saturday to listen to the pastor on duty or the brother on duty, 
You think you are already part of the rapture. I'm not talking about salvation because here, people confuse everything I'm saying. Many are saved later in the great tribulation, but the Lord does not want you to stay. That is why he warns if he does not do it with Israel in the sense that when he had to give them their deserved punishment, he gave it to them. You think it will happen to people who say, I'm already part of everything. I have no idea when he's coming because the Lord will come whenever he wants. From now on, I will tell you that the Lord will come on September 17th to 18th. He only does something after first notifying his servants, and one of those is me. Now, there are many more of us, and we are covering many views in a short period of time. Imagine how long it takes for churches to preach this. So, people do not preach these topics from the pulpits because they are not waiting for them. The leaders are not waiting. We have to get off the pulpit, and now it turns out that they attack us from the pulpit, knowing that it does not say that in the original, to this final phrase, but he, responding, said to the post-tribulation people, I truly tell you that I do not know you. Stay awake. In other words, do not fall asleep because you did not know the day and hour Christ arrived, so you stayed. Those who entered were those who knew and heard the voice and entered. Having clarified this point, I want to say one thing here is a blow that the Bible deals to the post-tribulation and the pre-tribulation. It is a double blow and you say this man went crazy. Of course, the scriptures say that through the madness of the gospel, we are in Christ and enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, look at the post-tribulation right now. At present it does not await you until the sun and the moon and the stars fall and a catastrophe happens here. Therefore, on the 17th and 18th, they will consider this a lie. That is the damage they did to the time of the Lord. It is a deception of Satan that they will not know the day, so they have little chance of being part of that day. Only the winner, the church of the promise, left. So, the people who are not expecting it will be saved, but in a very different way. They will know that they will have to go through the great tribulation because they will be warned there at the end that there are still three and a half years left. In other words, they are lost in time for having deceived many believers, and I say it with pain in my soul. But on the other hand, I have joy in the Lord, and I don't care what they say here in the comments. I have left it open precisely, so that you can see what they write because those who write are Christians. They are not atheists, so that you can see the situation. Why will the Lord have to reject six churches in recent times? He still has time to repent because a man with the Spirit of God takes the good and discards the bad. He does not stand here and comment, I'm going to look for you. That doesn't affect me. In fact, it amuses me because I have joy in my life. There is a parable that says that the workers who entered last received the same pay as those who had been there since seven in the morning. And that is what he does not like very much in my case. If the Lord had come a few years ago, I probably would not have been part of the Philadelphia church. Without a doubt, but for some reason, I now understand my purpose in the Lord because the enemy attempted many times against my life and could not. The pre-tribulation receives another blow from those who tell us now that the day and now no one knows. When it clearly says that the Father knows and the Father does nothing without revealing His servants or His slaves to say the original translation, then clearly we have to understand that the pre-tribulation has no meaning here either because they are waiting for it to come in the blink of an eye at any moment and for the seven years, where the construction of the temple in Jerusalem must take place, and then a beginning of a gift to the Jews, a gift of peace and prosperity three and a half. Years until the Antichrist mask is removed, they say, because they have not heard the correct interpretation that is on this channel, so that you perfectly understand what the Lord is talking about at the moment of the temple. As the book of Daniel says, in recent times, wisdom has increased. Everything has increased concerning Bible interpretation, which is why it is not what they told us 30 or 40 years ago that they have been dragging along that erroneous interpretation because 30, 40 years ago, his coming was decades away. Now he is coming, he
He is coming on September 17th to 18th and many ask where that date comes from. So don't be lazy, watch the videos and see all the revelation that the Lord is giving. There are about 15 videos in the playlist of this channel and more videos are coming. You have to see them all. Most of them are short videos so that you have the knowledge that is being given about the Lord. So what I want to tell you is that the pre-tribulation doesn't matter here either, since they say that no one knows the day or hour. So if you don't see the day and the hour, we thank God, who says, as the Bible says, that He comes in the middle of the week. Once the Lord reveals the day of the seventy the week, in the middle of the week He comes for the church of the promise, and the continuous sacrifice will be removed. We have already located the day. So we know it is the 17th and 18th. See the videos of the studies on this channel. Many also ask me, So you are the first man God revealed to you on the day of the rapture. Do you want me to answer you? Yes, yes, there is no other way. I had not heard anyone who had revealed against you on the day of the rapture, and I am not going to keep my mouth shut because you think or want to come here on the 19th to accuse me of being a false prophet. I fear my Lord. I am a soldier and servant of the Lord. I do not fear anyone else. My life has always been like this. I am also not afraid of any man or what he may say. And I do this out of love and affection and without haughtiness but strongly. Be angry, but do not sin, says the Lord. The man even called him children of the devil. I call them ignorant. Just don't worry. That's for you to wake up as you realize mine is much softer than what the apostles said. Much smoother. I receive much more criticism and insults, but for the glory and honor of the Lord, I am on the right path. The Lord is confirming everything thanks to the fact that they rose against me. But as a phrase says, the more stones you throw at me, the bigger my pedestal will be because the one who will reward me will be the Lord. And I want you to get this award and many hundreds of people who write to me daily to say we love you, because that is the Lord's people. I want to move on to the other video quickly. I will take a three minute break and we will continue with part two of this video. Very good. Let's move on to the first Christians, the second part of this exciting study. I hope you like the first part, but not before telling you that the first Christians, for example, the Church of Thessaloniki, had no doubts that the Lord would come on average days, not on days when the sky was falling and the sun and the moon would not shine their light, because they were waiting and they were being disturbed as if the day of the Lord was near says the wrong translation, which has it there in 1 Thessalonians because the translation is again making the Christian mistaken. Imagine it is logical how are they would be disturbed because the day of the Lord is approaching when the same Apostle Peter and Paul say rejoice and exhort one another. When that day is approaching, it would be a biblical contradiction. Then for the love of God began to wake up because the post-tribulation did not exist in the first Christians. They knew that the rapture event was different and our meeting with him at the second coming was going to be a catastrophe. There you go if you don't know. They go to the rapture. You arrive either with your death or you are a survivor of the nation. So clearly, there are no two ways about it. That is why you must approach the Lord. Do not believe me. Believe the word of the Lord. I am a dedicated man, body and soul to the gospel and to spread this message so that the Lord gives me his crown on that day, just like he did to you. That is why you must spread the videos. You will be rewarded. This is because among the people who have to get out of the deception, the deception that the enemy himself has also confused in the times. Now, they are listening a lot because it is coming. The first of the year, according to the Jews on April 9th, that is a lie. Please see the video here that spring already began on March 5th, 2024 in Israel. Follow the biblical regulations. Watch the video. The first day of God's year is confirmed, 
Do not be fooled because you will be out of date in time just like the Jews are. They do not have the Spirit of God because they have rejected the Son of God. God's calendar is lunisolar. The first Christians did not doubt this issue. There is also this video on that channel. But clearly, they were not going to be disturbed because the Lord was going to come. The disturbance was because they believed that the Lord had already come, and they wrote him a letter to the Apostle Paul. They were regular days. Why do I always say the 17th and 18th? In many videos, I say the 18th. I am going to clarify this point for those who want to attack. I always use the 18th because the Lord's day changes in the afternoon. It is in the afternoon. Tomorrow is a day, according to Genesis. So, at this point, it is the middle of week 70, point number one. You should not miss any video because all this comes from the heart of our God and Savior. The Feast of Tabernacles points to day number one to you. It seems to him that this is a coincidence that in the correct calendar, it is placed on September 17th, 18 of this year, and it is the Feast of Tabernacles that appears in Leviticus and also in the Millennium, that is, in the future. Zechariah says that whoever does not go up to the Feast of Tabernacles will have a drought in his land. And this is the only feast that is repeated twice in Leviticus. Later, I am going to show it to you. This is also the last trumpet. Point number two is that of the Apostle Paul for the church. Many here are confused and say the last trumpet is already judgment. How is the church going to go through the judgment? The rebel church is going to go through a trial. They are partly right, but they forget about the church of the promise because we have not understood that the body of Christ comprises seven different ways of acting and thinking. Some leave first, and others have to be tested and saved in the end of the Great Tribulation. The teaching that it is one universal church and that we are all will be caught up only if we all believe in Christ does not appear either in the churches of Revelation or nowhere in the Scriptures. On the contrary, as we have already seen of the last trumpet that is a deception, that is a deception of Satan, so that you are confident, so you do not have to watch. I already believed in Christ. Now I have to wait. Here, it doesn't matter what time you enter. It's your time to enter. Now, if it were up to me, the belief I had in the past would not join, but now I enter. The same worker who will be paid in the last hour is the one who started working at 7 in the morning. Not get sad. Matthew 20 verse 1 to 16. The word of the Lord is precise, and I will not deny that I have had ups and downs in my Christian life. Anyone who knows me knows. To the last trumpet of the year and the previous feast, to the last trumpet of the year of the Lord. It will not be at a festival of the first trumpet of Passover, for example, or unleavened bread. Point number three is the 80-year-old generation. This is impressive. May 14, 2028, marks the 80th anniversary of the generation that, according to Psalm 90, the Lord had mercy on the strongest of them. Even the most robust until the last day, it was hidden in his words, the last day, May 14th, 1948, Israel is founded and comes to May 14th, 2028, and this is calculated. If we count the 1,335 days that they are on the screen here, you see it. What are the days that Daniel talks about since the continuous sacrifice has been removed? The actions of the saints, not of animals in a temple. Watch the videos here on this same channel you will be able to position yourself at the correct time. And you will see that they are clearly nailed on May 14th, 2028. Raise Israel on the full moon of the year 2028. Is this a coincidence? Well, the Lord has already done it all. He has done it all. He brings out Israel on a full moon. The story in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and he is also going to bring out the church in the middle of the lunar calendar. Why do I manage the lunar calendar since it is God's only calendar? According to Genesis 14, he put the sun and the moon, the greatest lights, to mark the times, that is, festivals, Psalm 104. I don't remember the verse at this time of the end. Their times are different from those of the Gregorian calendar. 
The dates I use in the Gregorian calendar are past the lunisolar calendar. I do this so that you understand, I am not going to put the 15th of Trishri here on September 18th, but it is the equivalent very well where it stops at 177 days, from March 25th, since he took the Israelites out of the land of Egypt and celebrate unleavened bread until the Feast of Tabernacles 177 days, mark this year, not another year, the middle of the 70th week because a half cannot be the beginning, this is also explained in the 70th week video, that is, in the 7th month, it cannot be a beginning of the week of the Lord according to Genesis. The word Moev is used 114 times, which is the word festivals, according to the same word in Leviticus 23, solemn festivals. Then the Lord set the festivals for the sun and the moon. So when does the week of the Lord begin? The feast of the Lord with the relevant feast of taking Israel out of Egypt, just as it will end with the last feast of the year when the church of the promise is taken out of this earth. That is why we will celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles for 1,000 years. God brought us out of the earth and used the same symbology with the Israelites, but now with the church. This happened when they had to kill the lamb, and the last lamb was sacrificed at the end and was Christ. The Lord is revealing it now, a full moon and super full moon and an eclipse. There are three or two days, a full moon, a super full moon, which means the last harvest, the last great harvest, and the eclipse between the 17th, 18th, that's why I always mention from the 17th to the 18th, and due to the jet lag, depending on the country, and on the Sabbath. The Lord returns on a day of rest. There is the accounting of the exact days, not the fixed day that those who keep the day of rest from Friday to Saturday keep. The Lord does not have a fixed day in his calendar, but they are also doing this badly, with all my respect to those who keep the Sabbath, since they do it, try to do it well on the corresponding day, which is precisely in September, it will be a Tuesday on the Sabbath. Because if you have the first moon that tells you the first day established by the Lord, what the fourth day of your Gregorian calendar, or whatever you want to call it will be like the next day, it will have to be the first day of the new moon at the first ray of light from day 1, day 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6, day 7. There is the Sabbath day on day 7. So that day sometimes falls from Friday to Saturday. It falls 7, 14, 21, 28. That is the month of the Lord. When there is a new moon, the counting begins again. It is the biblical ordinance they have done it wrong, and they continue to do it wrong because the leaders do not know why the knowledge was open now. So anyone who thinks they are pleasing the Lord is doing it wrong. Take the good, throw away the bad. What else can we have? Look at all the points there are and don't be fooled by this day, which the Jews are announcing and that there is an eclipse the day before. Don't be confused. The eclipse is going to be here and everything indicates as I am telling you. Look at all the events from the 17th to the 18th if you think this is a coincidence. Excuse me, brother. I will tell you that you lack understanding. This is not a coincidence of life. The 80 years are marked together with the 1,335 days on May 14th, which is the second coming. Starting on September 18th, that is also a coincidence. Look what a beautiful coincidence we have out there, in addition to the others that I did not put here, which is that May 14th, 2028, is precisely the first day. Listen to this with attention on the first day of the millennium after a day of rest. But well, it is also true that we will only consider that a little, because the times there can also be distorted in the sense that it will be a day of rest. But that day may change the schedule. But the days are going to be days, and they are 1,335 days. In other words, I want to say that perhaps the days last less, but it will still be a day. That's why the Bible says 1,335 days here. The Adventists and those who keep the Sabbath convert it to days of the Gregorian year. But with these studies, they are trembling because it is not a tremendous mathematical coincidence. The Lord says that he entered the day he had to enter and go up to Jerusalem. He said that his time had yet to come. 
The Lord has all the events in his chronology of the sun and the moon. There is no possibility that with the signs in the heavens, the church has made aside, seen to the side, and has not considered this, which is why many people are lost. Let's go to the feast day in the sky, the palms, Leviticus 29, and Revelation 7, and we end with this. In the party of Leviticus, which is a symbol of what will happen, it also speaks twice. It is the only party that speaks to us in the same chapter. Here it is. You can read it in your Bibles, which says that on the 15th day of the 7th month, from September 17th to September 18th, the 15th day of the 7th month, it is mentioned twice. The only festival mentioned is on the 15th day of the 7th month. When you have gathered the fruit of the land, you will celebrate a festival to Jehovah for seven days. The first day will be a rest day, and the eighth day will also be a rest day. This year, we will spend the feast in heaven and celebrate this feast in heaven. What is the basis for saying that? Look, now we are going to show you that it is said that the fruit of the earth is gathered, symbolizing the rapture. You will celebrate Jehovah for seven days. The first day will be a day of rest. What day is the Sabbath? That day, we will be gathered, mathematically exact. Let's see what verse 40 says and on the first day, you will take branches with fruit from a beautiful tree, palm branches, branches from leafy trees, and willow of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. That's why I say that we are going to celebrate it there. Look where it takes us these palm tree branches, and now we will go. Please allow me a second. I don't want to cut the video. So we will look here for palms. In Revelations, and look how easy this is, here is Revelation 7 verse 9 Feast of Tabernacles. Don't be confused because here there is a lot of symbology also. After this, I looked and hear a great crowd that no one could count from all nations and tribes and people and languages that were before the throne, and the presence of the Lamb dressed in white clothes and with the palms in their hands. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have the rapture of the church in the Festival of Tabernacles of 2024. There is no day like this that the Lord has revealed in the Bible, and at this time, it is the most remarkable study that there has been and will be of all time. Many have already announced the day, but they have yet to announce the festival and the correct date on which the generation of the fig tree ends, where everything fits perfectly. And aside, now we have biblical support for this date. Not only biblical support, but also the support of the visions of the brothers and sisters. When I started uploading these videos, I began to receive messages from all over the world from brothers and sisters who had also received the year, others the month, others received the full moon in September. All of them had received this revelation in dreams or visions. What is happening is that many people write to me saying I no longer want to go to church because the churches do not talk about this. We dedicate ourselves to collecting those annulled for bearing this type of testimony who cannot be assembled because they are being prevented. That is why the people of God have been acting like this recently, from below the pulpits and not from above the pulpits. Unfortunately, I have to say this because the Lord taught me this and showed it to us in many ways. Unfortunately, in the churches and the pulpits, they forget that they will be talking about biblical prophecy, eschatology, and chronology. This is impossible because Satan has deceived that no one knows the day and hour. So my brothers, this is an exhortation for you. For those who are listening, take the good, throw away the bad, but keep all the good because nothing is terrible here, and I am here to serve you until that day. I am surprised by the number of people who do not believe, but at the same time, I am saddened by the number of Christian people who have not realized the times we are living in. They continue with their chores, work, and sports, that is, tremendous priorities in recent times, and nothing from the Lord because they believe everything will be fine by attending church once or twice a week already has everything solved. They are not aware that we are in the last time. The rapture is not for everyone. So wake up, church, wake up. 
because the Lord put the voices and has made many voices no longer alone. Still, I alone will not be able to cover my neighbor who does not see this on the internet. This preaching is not being accepted in different media. They are cutting everything off. Why is it? So start waking up because this is no joke. The Lord withdraws us from the earth from September 17th to 18th, 2024. He withdraws to a holy church without spots or wrinkles. And when the word of the Lord says holy, it is holy and without spots. I ain't here not to play with fire. Let's see if the Lord takes me the same way, even though I don't expect it only because I have accepted Christ in my heart, and that's where everything ends. No family, don't be fooled. There has to be a life change, as it happened to me personally. Excuse me if there is no change in your way of life if you are not brave and leave all your fleshy life. Still, you stay because there are six churches in the book of Revelations that stay and look at how beautiful they were and read all the flattery that the Lord said. But in the end, he tells them, I am putting you to bed. Then if you are not holy this last time and do not repent, rejoice that you are listening to the voice of the Lord that the Lord is coming. You have to be a watchman. Do not be silent, that no one will fall for you. If you are before a pastor, do not shut your mouth because your reward will be in heaven from September 18th onwards. We are leaving this earth. We are already in the times where God will send the judgment first to the churches and then to the rest of the unbelieving world. Some people tell me no, there is still a lot to do. What to do? Are you not seeing the massacre of innocence? Children are suffering from all kinds of abuse. Everything that the Lord hates is happening now. And do you think that the Lord is not going to intervene? Does he not see what is happening? Or are you blind? The Lord is announcing the day and hour he will withdraw the church from this world. I will be in charge of preaching the gospel. And right now, you have less than 174 days left to repent. We will leave the comments so that you can see in what conditions the people of God are in. When many open their hearts, come here to throw stones against the day. It's unfortunate, but they also did everything to the Lord, which is why he says rejoice when they do these things to him. Imagine, I never thought we would have these treasures. Never in my life did I think I would end my days like this. But the Lord is great. Now I understand why Satan wanted to kill me twice and couldn't. Satan tried to kill me twice and couldn't because this was my purpose, and I want it to be yours. I want you to get up, be part of the Lord's plans, and be intelligent about distributing this news because Satan is furious. He does not want you to find out the truth. He does not want anyone to find out that there is an established day, a day assigned to him on which there is little time left, and that little time will begin precisely when the church is removed from the earth. When the archangel Michael throws the dragon and his angels from the second heaven to earth, we see 42 months after this event, not seven years. Do not be fooled. The seven years began a while ago, and this will be a point and final. Here, the Lord spoke, and the Lord made this final point with notice, as he put the watchman in because the Lord does nothing first without notifying his servants, the prophets. Blessings and the experiences of visions and dreams remain for another day, supporting the study. Today, we have this powerful message that the Lord has given us. If God is with us, who can be against us? So think carefully before judging the servants announcing the end of times. Blessings to all.